When we consider the anatomy of the posterior aspect of the elbow, there are three key structures. First, the olecranon fossa that is mostly filled with fatty tissue. Second, the distal insertion of the triceps brachii tendon, which inserts on the olecranon. And last, the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve starts in the upper arm, then passes through the intermuscular septum and under the arcade of Struthers. It sits in the cubical tunnel between the medial epicondyle and the olecranon. When it exits the cubital tunnel, it passes between the two muscle bundles of the flexor carpi ulnaris. We will tackle the posterior compartment of the elbow, which is likely the easiest compartment to examine with ultrasound. Nonetheless, it is still highly relevant because it can be the site of tendon, nerve, articular or soft tissue lesions. To analyse the posterior aspect, the patient will sit turned three quarters or with their back to the examiner, then place the palm of their hand on the exam table, flexing the elbow this way. The first image to generate is an axial section, which is somewhat general since it allows us to see all the structures that we will investigate later on. The ulnar nerve interposed between the medial epicondyle and the olecranon, the triceps and deeper, the olecranon fossa. Under the triceps brachii, we can see the olecranon fossa, which is mostly filled with fatty tissue that appears hyperechoic. In some cases, you might see this olecranon fatty tissue move a bit because of effusion that can be a sign of joint pathology or of an occult fracture at the bony surfaces of the posterior fossa of the elbow. Next, we can investigate the triceps tendon using a sagittal section. Its insertion on the olecranon may appear hypoechoic, but this is solely due to anistropy artifacts. If you gently tip the probe to change the angle of attack of the sound waves, the tendon's normal morphology and echogenicity will reappear. This tendon has a fibrilla appearance due to the interposition of tendon and fatty layers, giving it a laminated appearance. If we look at the emphasis of this tendon on an axial section by turning the probe 90 degrees, we can see that this distal insertion of the triceps tendon has a subtle fascicle appearance. But don't mistake these intratendinous digitations for potential partial tendon tears. The ulnar nerve is analyzed using an axial view at the olecranon fossa. It is interposed between the epicondyle and the olecranon and closely follows the medial head of the triceps brachii. By using the elevator technique, we can follow it in the arm up to the intermuscular septum. It can be compressed at this level, 6 to 8 centimeters above the olecranon, by a fibrous band called the arcade of Struthers. If we shift to a sagittal section, we can determine its thickness. 
On an axial section, the normal ulnar nerve measures about 8 square millimeters. Distally, you can follow the nerve to the muscle compartment. holding the flexor carpi ulnaris and the flexor digitorum profundus going to the fourth and fifth digits. On comparative transverse sections of two cubital tunnels, we can see evidence of damage to the right ulna nerve on ultrasound. It is swollen, and its cross-section is much larger than the nerve in the contralateral arm. On a sagittal section, the thickening is visible with loss of the nerve's fascicled appearance. Upstream of the cubital tunnel, the nerve's appearance returns to normal. Here is a case of triceps tendon rupture, a relatively rare injury that occurs in high-level athletes during forced hyperextension. You can see a gap where the triceps tendon normally inserts, which is now filled by a hematoma. Here is a case of hygroma. When not compressed, we can see that the hygroma presents as an anechoic collection with floating hyperechoic fatty elements. If I press on the posterior part of the elbow, the probe's pressure will chase out the fluid and the section once again looks like what we would call subnormal. You have seen that the analysis is fairly easy. The main structures are the triceps tendon, the ulnar nerve, and the olecranon fossa in the elbow's posterior aspect. The patient's position is easy to reset, and I thank our model for spending the entire day with us. You have the probe.